Hi, I'm No Fumar. Now I'm going to take you through my build log of how I took my Game Boy Color and made it front lit. And not only did I do that, but I made it so you can adjust it. So stay with me for about 15 minutes and I'll take you through and show you how I did it. Hey guys, so I just got my front light kit in and uh, I wanted to show a little demonstration of it and uh, how I'm going to put it together. And what I've got here set up is a power supply, a 47 ohm resistor, and a 200 ohm trim pod. And uh, I've also got my multimeter in line to show how much current it draws because I wanted to make sure it didn't draw too much current. So I'm going to turn the power supply on it, set it 3 volts, and you can see there uh, how much light is being produced. I'm also drawing about six mils. I'm going to try and see if I can figure this out. But um, you'll see when I've got my trim pot here. When I turn this down, not only does my uh, current go down, but the, uh, the brightness drops down. So you see I drop it more down, and I can turn it back up and turn it down and up. So that's just a little bit of a background on the uh, the setup that I'm going to be using, and that'll all go inside the uh, the Game Boy. I plan on putting the trim pot somewhere around down there so I can easily get to it while the Game Boy is running, and uh, I'm just going to make a build log so you can see what's going on. So let's get to it. So I don't want to talk too much here while the video is going on. I'd rather you just watch, but basically I just want to summarize here that I'm taking the motherboard out and then taking the screen out and test fitting and making sure that the front light fits inside its case. So I actually had a pretty big error here happen here with the uh, the local glue. Uh, you'll see here in just a moment I'll zoom in to show you what happened but basically this glue is supposed to come out kind of like maple syrup kind of uh, consistency and you'll see here in just a second when I squeezed it out it came out almost like some gelatinous gel it was it was very odd to me why this happened my best guess is somehow it got opened a little bit and some air got in and it got exposed and started to harden there you can see as I'm scraping it off a little bit to try and get this weird gel out of the way I figured maybe it was you know the initial little bit had some gel and I just had to get it out of the way and I didn't look careful enough and I start to press it in some more and not only does a little bit more of that goop that gel like substance come out but a whole lot of it splurges out now that that in itself right there is not a a horrible amount of loca glue to have however I had the gelatinous blob in there and I had to clean it off and get it out I'm not sure if you noticed while I was recording, but when I was working with the uh, loca glue, some of it came out in a very gelatinous form, and I had to wipe it off, and it, it pretty much ruined the screen. I really doubt you can tell, but there's a little bit of smudging and uh, very odd film that comes up the side and around, and uh, it pretty much, in my opinion, ruined the, uh, the screen. So I got in contact with the supplier, and he's sending out another one. So for right now, I'm just going to stick this in. And uh, right, I'm also working on the uh, circuitry and getting the trim pot to fit in. I had to sand out a, a larger hole. A lot of this you didn't see because I was trying to work on cleaning this screen off. But uh, I'll try and get this back on recording so that you can see what's going on. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, this will just sit in there until I get the new screen and then I can try to loca glue again. Just be careful when you apply glue. Always just sacrifice a little bit off to the side and let it drip out to make sure you've got good flow. And um, hopefully that will help an awful lot. And you won't run into the same mistake I did. But um, So that's where I'm at now. I'm just going to continue going and I'll try and keep the camera going again. So sorry for that, but we'll, we'll keep going from there. So here I've got my father, who is an electrical engineer over here, helping me out, trying to decide how to wire it up, what resistor to use, what trim pot to use, and a trim pot is short for a trimmer potentiometer, which is basically like a variable resistor, just a lot smaller. And I wound up using a 47 ohm resistor in series with a 200 ohm, because that's all I had, a trim pot. 
and I used a resistor and trim pot in series together because if you turn the trim pot all the way down you never want to have it approach zero ohms because it'll short out or draw too much current and freak everything else out uh, so so that's why I did that now here I, I kind of start struggling it's, it's a little bit funny actually I start struggling trying to figure out how I'm going to fit everything because the front light adds about I don't know eighth or sixteenth of an inch thickness behind the screen and when trying to test fit it I noticed that it was too thick I couldn't figure out where the wires to go I mean I'm really struggling here I usually don't struggle this much with just simple things but I was having a really hard time is the, is the end point but um I wind up coming back here and I'll, I'll show you a little bit later what I do but I wind up cutting some grooves to make room for the wires which I should have done in the first place silly me but uh, anyway I just thought it was a little bit funny to to watch me sort of grovel and not know what was going on Now I'm coming back again here and I'm finishing soldering all the wires. Got some of this really special thin wire stuff that is really cool. And I'm just tacking it onto the solder points, which is like the top rightmost pin on that little power regulator. And um, I decided to go off the ground off the power switch. And now I'm just wrapping everything up, putting everything back into place. And as you'll see there, I've got a piece of tape over some of the wire. That was just to cover an open circuit so it didn't short against anything. And now I've got it all back together, and I'm just going to let the video talk for itself. Well, as you can see, it works, and uh, put my screwdriver in here. I can make it brighter, make it dimmer. That's pretty cool. But as you can see, here's this uh, this smudge that's uh, from being broken uh, with with all that glue that's splurged out from the loca so that needs to be fixed so when the replacement screen gets here I will fix that but for right now I'd say that's pretty cool turn the brightness down I don't need it that bright there you can see I can get easily to the trim pot turn that down definitely a little washed out so like I said, it's a little bit washed out, and I'll remedy that later when the new screen arrives and I've got some loca glue. But in the meantime, uh, I later took it apart because I was stressing the wires and I was scared about hurting them or damaging the wires or the screen. And I came back with a Dremel and cut some slots for the wires to go through from the front light kit. I definitely suggest doing this. If you don't have a Dremel, just use some wire cutters and keep at it until you get just enough of a, uh, a slot for the wires to go through and I pretty much just wrap it on back up here. So now I've got my new replacement front light screen and I'm going to try it again. I take the old one out, clean the screen off as best I can to get any dust or specks off. You don't any, want any of that showing up. I also wipe down the front screen a little bit, and this time I correctly add the proper amount of loca, and there was no gelatinous glue, so I just put it in there. And one thing to notice, you'll see in that picture there, I had the display hanging off the side, so the ribbon cable was not pressing on the flat surface. That's because when it when it is laying on the cable, it leans it up, and I, I noticed that it slid the screen down a little bit, and I had to move it a couple times, so I just moved it to a sawhorse to make it a little bit easier. And I just wrap it back on up, 
and good to go. And I believe I have it all finished and I will let the video talk for itself again. I lied. You can see that the uh, immediately the viewing angles are just a lot better. The color, I guess, dispersion, or rather the light dispersion, is a lot more uniform, and it doesn't make everything, you know, washed out. The colors are a lot better. I've got some pictures here in a minute that I will show, but I believe in just a second I show what it looks like when you change the light to show what it looks like at full brightness or what full brightness is for me, which is the trim at the min level and there it was at the max level showing you the maximum dimness that it will go to and that's pretty much it and I've got a couple pictures here to show you the first set are what it looked like initially without the loca glue applied now in person it definitely looks a lot better uh, but these are just to show you a little bit of a comparison you can see it's washed out you can't really see a lot of the colors that's a particularly poor picture some of the lighter colors really fade away now this is with the loca glue installed you can see the colors pop a lot more the light is dispersed a lot lot better and um, I try to get another couple shots in here with some color in the background to show you a little bit of a comparison and that's it thank you well there you have it everything that I did to make my Game Boy Color front light now there are lots of guides online to tell you how to do everything and uh, as long as you follow those, like what resistor to use, what trim pot to use, you know, you can get a really good idea of everything that needs to be done. There are a lot more in-depth guides. This was more of just a build log to show you everything I did. I'd like to thank Handheld Legend for supplying everything. They didn't send it to me for free. I had to purchase it, but they did have the supply ready. And uh, the guy that runs the shop is a really good individual. He's really good at sending emails back and forth. I'll link his shop down in the description below. And thank you guys for watching this video, and hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm No Fumar, and today I'm going to be taking you through how I took my regular Game Boy Color and made it backlit, or rather frontlit, because I'm stupid and can't realize what I'm doing.